Hello and welcome to the first in the series of the Meet the Employer webinars, bringing you exclusive access to inside information from a wide range of employers. This series is run in partnership with Graduate Recruitment Bureau, the UK's leading recruitment service for entry level careers. It's brilliant to have so many of you joining us today, so thank you very much for your time. I'm Katie Hilliard, your host for the webinar series, and I'm delighted to be joined by Siemens Health and Ears. Before we get started, I've got some quick housekeeping. So the webinar will last no longer than 25 minutes. And if you experience any technical difficulties, don't worry, as a copy of the recording will be made available on the Siemens Health and Ears profile in your online career platform. As you can see from the slide, we have a number of uh, webinars confirmed in the series. Um, and the, this is just a sample of who you can expect to hear from. We are in the process of adding a number of employers um, over the next few weeks, so you can expect this to, to grow significantly. So let's get started with today. I am delighted to be joined by Rachel Robinson, who is a talent acquisition partner at Siemens Health and Ears. Hello, Rachel. Hello. I've been fortunate enough to have a good chat with Rachel, and I, I certainly know that Siemens Health and Ears is really transforming the way things are done in healthcare. And it certainly sounds like a super place to start your career. Uh, but we're obviously here to hear from Rachel. And uh, before we dive into the detail, I wondered whether, Rachel, in, in less than 60 seconds, you could possibly share a bit of insight about your career path to date from your university days through to your current role? Yeah, sure. So I am a talent acquisition partner here at Siemens Health and Ears, and I actually started at Siemens back when I did a placement year as part of my degree. So I did a 12 month internship in the talent acquisition team and really enjoyed it. Um, and when I graduated, I did start working for another company within talent acquisition. However, I kept in touch with people at Siemens and all the incredible work they were doing. So when this opportunity came up, it was a no brainer, really. I'd always had a particular affinity towards the healthcare side of the business. And um, so I have been here um, almost a year now and I'm really enjoying it. I and recruit for our experienced hires across the business. So everything from our customer service engineers that are out servicing the hospitals through to our scientists in our laboratories. Um, but my main focus and interest lies in our entry level talent programs. So everything from our school leavers and apprenticeships through to interns and graduate opportunities, which I know we will um, touch on a bit later. So I've been really enjoying it and it's a very mixed role. Great, and it's certainly brilliant that you've had experience on the placement year yourself and then have come back into the company at a later date as well. Um, mm -hmm. many, of the, <laughs> uh, many of the students I'm sure are aware of Siemens, but perhaps less uh, are aware of Siemens Health and Ears. Um, and it's clearly a, a fascinating uh, business operating in a sector that we can all tangibly relate to at this time. Um, can you introduce Siemens Health and Ears to us? Yeah, sure. So Siemens Health and Ears is a global medical technology company and we're probably most well renowned for our medical imaging side of the business. So producing CT scanners, MRI scanners, X-ray, for example. And we also have a laboratory diagnostics side of the business where we produce testing systems for haematology and urinalysis, um, with two examples there. Um, and we help laboratories to improve their clinical workflow through automation. We also have in our portfolio point of care systems um, which can provide accurate results on the spot um, for patients um, with diseases such as diabetes. It's really interesting actually to look on our website and the different health conditions and diseases where we can help um, throughout the patient journey. We also have our advanced therapies and digital services which are really helping transform the healthcare industry. And then we have our customer services side of the business. So Essentially, they make sure the systems are running properly and that staff are well trained on them. And it's worth noting as well that um, health engineers don't solely manufacture equipment. 
and we have our enterprise services side of the businesses business which is more about consulting and we really partner with healthcare providers to co-create and, and transform the patient journey right from diagnostics through to therapy so we definitely operate on a large scale and i think globally and um, it's estimated that five million people and um, worldwide every day benefit from one of our technologies which i find really impressive definitely definitely and in terms of 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 uh, people benefiting. Um, uh, when we first talked, you talked me through how Siemens Health and Ears have responded to the to global pandemic, um, and this in part is due to your dynamic culture. What exactly do you mean by this, um, and 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 what's the company doing? Yeah, so as you said, we're in an industry where more than ever at this time we're impacting everyone's lives globally. And I think it's been really rewarding to work um, in a company that's really impacting on that. So when I speak with other colleagues, uh, we're so proud of how we've all adapted to working from home. Um, and that's um, been partly down to Siemens dynamic culture. So we, for instance, were able to transform our IT infrastructure for our whole company to be working remotely and a proportion of our workforce are able to work from home and we will be for the foreseeable future and um, so quickly being able to provide the capacity for everyone to re work remotely and um, was really great and also the flexibility shown by the senior management there was guidance from the outset and support on how to kind of navigate these times and then in terms of our key workers which are still out there on the front line we were able to quickly provide them with PPE so um by adapting in this way we were able to really continue work without any significant interruptions and on the business side of things we've continued to deliver and support our customers on the front line and um, we're providing their routine care and that's always been our priority really and beyond that um, and beyond the existing portfolio that we have we were also able to innovate during this pandemic. So we have been involved in the development of new tools for the detection and diagnosis of COVID-19. And we're actually one of the few companies globally now that can accompany the treatment pathway um, of people suffering with COVID-19 all the way from diagnosis to prognosis um, and follow up afterwards. So I think that's testament to obviously all our employees hard work, but also the innovative nature of our culture that's enabled us to adapt really quickly. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, it certainly sounds uh, to be involved with, um, obviously healthcare on its own is, is, is an incredibly um, meaningful industry to be in, in terms of the impact you can have on people's lives. Um, and obviously with the pandemic right now, now more than ever, that's brought to the fore. Um, it's clearly gonna be suiting someone um, who is looking for a purpose-driven career, which leads me nicely onto um, your career discovery program. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So it's a two year program that's designed for business and engineering students and you will complete four six month placements um, across the business. So there's sales, service, project management, marketing, there's lots of different opportunities and the program is really designed to give you the skills and knowledge to become our future leaders in the business so you'll be given a business mentor as well to guide you through that development and um, i actually have some projects here um, that our recent graduates have undertaken just to give you an idea of what you could be getting involved in so we have people that have been involved in pitching a new sales strategy for our laboratory diagnostics business um, conducting market analysis for mergers and acquis acquisitions and new product launches working alongside an external company to deliver training and improve our internal CRM system. And some graduates have actually been seconded out to work with the hospital trusts, um, and they've been responsible for streamlining 
processes and really partnering with our customers to help them improve the level of service they provide to their patients. So all the projects um, are allowing our graduates to gain a deep understanding about the healthcare industry. And there's also the opportunity to get involved in corporate social responsibility. So we work closely with a charity called The Next Big Thing, which is really um, focused on providing resources and inspiring students to consider STEM subjects, um, which is a great opportunity and cause to be involved with. Um, so I think that overall, what stands out about our career discovery programme is that you really do um, have the chance to take responsibility for high profile projects from across the business, which gives you senior level visibility. And it's in the name really, but you have the ability to um, discover your interests and where your strengths lie and can influence the design of your own career journey with us. Yeah, it certainly sounds it. And I think certainly when um, you're starting out in a career, having the opportunity to work in different departments, taking part in different projects is invaluable at that point because you're looking at how, uh, which path you may want to take and, and where, like you say, your strengths lie and your interests lie. So to have that opportunity um, at, at the start of your career is, is brilliant. Just yeah. out of interest, Rachel, how, oh, sorry. <laughs> Definitely a uh, hire for potential. Um, and then once somebody's in the business, that's when we train them up with the skills and knowledge to really thrive. And how long is the programme? It's a two year programme. Um, and within that you have four six month rotations. I see, okay, um, great. And obviously, we're, we've been uh, propelled into the digital age like uh, uh, nothing else at the moment with uh, the pandemic and suddenly having to, um, to move more than we expected online um, in terms of, well, all active, lots of parts of life. But certainly when it comes to um, uh, applying for roles and online assessments, I wanted to ask a question um, about your virtual assessments and, and how they work. So I think it'll be really useful for students to gain an understanding of this. Yeah, so a large majority of our assessment um, was online already prior to the pandemic. Um, so to take you through it, it's a four stage process um, with the first being an initial submission of your CV and online application form. And then we have a um, online behavioral test. So it's an app-based um, game that we partner with a company called Arctic Shores to produce. Um, and you work through different levels of the game. And the only guidance I could really give you here is not to overthink it. And um, so it provides a report of your traits and behaviors afterwards, which I personally found scarily accurate. Um, and then we look at those results and map it against what uh, we believe is a good fit profile for Siemens Health and Ears. Um, and then if you are successful after that testing stage, you will be invited to a video interview. So you will record answers to some preset questions, um, usually competency based, and that would take around 20 to 30 minutes. And then following that, if you make it to the final stage, you'll be invited to an assessment centre, which ideally we would like to be in person because you get to meet the team that you'd be working with and see the site that you'd be based at. However, during um, COVID-19 and social distancing, we obviously weren't able to have those in-person assessments. So we adapted um, in multiple ways for some of our opportunities um, and some hiring managers decided that they'd still like people to prepare a presentation and deliver that online um, and other technical tests were replaced with sending out a brief an hour prior to the interview and then you would ask be asked to work your way through that and then present back after an hour and um, over video so future plans 
are that it'll probably still be a mixture of virtual and in-person assessments but that's entirely based on guidance from the government and what the future looks like in terms of social distancing sure okay that's really interesting to know um, certainly, just from what you're describing, um, there are a number of key skills that would apply, whether it's a virtual assessment or an in-person as uh, assessment. Um, but do you have any particular tips um, for success when it comes to the virtual assessment? Yeah, so I did have a think about this. And I always give two um, pieces of advice anyway with interviews. The first being to research the company beyond the About Us page. So it's all well and good knowing our products, but if you really want to impress um, and stand out, it's be, it'd be good to look at recent news articles or even set up a Google Alerts um, with the company name. So for instance, if you were able to show that you were aware of our new antibody test that we just launched or recent acquisitions, then that would really set you apart from other candidates. And secondly, we use competency-based questions at Feeling Calvineers. So to be um, to get familiar really with answering those questions, I know that the STAR method is used quite commonly. And I would go a step further and say, um, look at STAIR, um, which stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result, and Evaluation. And so that final step really, um, moves you a step ahead of other candidates and shows that you can critically reflect on the actions that you've taken um, and helps the interviewer get what we really want from those questions. So those are two pieces of advice that I tend to give and in terms of um, the virtual side of things and becoming more comfortable with um, speaking on video, um, I'd say that just practice the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll be and the more you'll be able to present your true self, which is what we're really looking for. So simple things um, like prepare. There's nothing worse than having a technical glitch. So check your camera, check your microphone, block out any distractions um, and make sure that you won't be disturbed. So probably best to be in the comfort of your own home. Um, that said, make sure that you do present yourself um, in a formal way. So I'd be lying if I said I'd look like this throughout the entirety of lockdown, I definitely haven't, but it does help getting dressed in something that you would wear to an interview. So you get into that mindset um, of presenting your best self. And then um, other things I would say, see if I'm following my own advice here, but to look directly in the camera and um, so whether you need um, something on the side of the camera, just to remind you to look directly at the camera, it does help to give eye contact and um, just be authentic, really. Try and be your true self, let your personality come through. We're looking for people that have a passion for healthcare. So if you can express that well um, in an interview, then you're going to really stand out. That's so helpful, Rachel. Thank you. And certainly uh, you can uh, judge us based on some of those tips that Rachel has given us regarding uh, how we come across on a, on a video recording. Um, I think it's worth but, mentioning that we are conscious when we're reviewing video interviews, especially the ones where you're recording an answer, that it's not the most natural of situations. You can't read the interviewer's body language or you don't get prompts. So that is um, taken into consideration when reviewing them. So I would say it's um, easier said than done, but try not to be too nervous when you're doing them. No, and I think the point you made earlier about preparation being key um, is, is so accurate. I think the more you can prepare and the, the more you can practice, record yourself, um, record yourself, uh, make sure that you can see that uh, what your background is going to look like, what the lighting's like, how quiet it is, what the sound's like, I think really does make a difference in terms of then how confident you feel about the, the recording that you'll be doing. So yeah, brilliant, thank you. Moving on, so in terms of getting back to the, to the company itself, can you describe your company culture in three words? I'm expecting this 
quite a tricky question actually <laughs> yeah in three words um i would probably go with dynamic passionate and inclusive so dynamic because even though we're a large organization we're able to still be innovative and and we're encouraged to think big and fail fast so we um, are able to really adapt and change is constant in the healthcare industry so we need to really be dynamic as a business and I've chosen passionate because we really are all united in a common purpose of um, driving innovation and ensuring people live healthier and longer through our healthcare innovations. And I really do sense that when working with people from across the business, um, they're all very driven by the fact we're shaping the future of healthcare. And then the third one I said was inclusive. Um, so we're a global company working across different countries um, and diverse teams, but it's not just about being diverse, it's also about being inclusive. And I really do think we are at Siemens Health and Ears. So everyone, everyone's opinion is valued. Um, and I said earlier that I started out as an intern here and I never once felt that I was restricted um, by having intern in my title. So from day one, I was a member of the team and it comes with a lot of responsibility, but it's great to have that trust and autonomy in your role um, and it really helps you develop. Brilliant, thank you. And I, I think with this particular question when it comes to the students listening um this is so important and if this resonates with you um you know it's a really gives you a really good indication of, of actually how likely it is that you will enjoy um, working in this kind of company um, i think if you're if the company culture doesn't quite fit with um what you yourself can get passionate about it can be very difficult to um to have a to, 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 well, to have a fulfilling career in, in that particular company. So I think uh, just taking into account what Rachel said, if think about whether, whether or not this resonates with you. Okay, so in terms of the next question, what I wanted to uh, think more about was the actual specific skills and behaviors that you think are key for a successful career at Siemens Health and Ears. Okay, so I would, say that like most forward-thinking companies at the moment we have a massive focus on um, upskilling our current workforce with digital skills however that's also going to be a main focus when looking at our graduate recruitment and the same goes with data and the need for analytical skills if you're used to working um, with large data sets and have experience of drawing real actionable insights from that, then you're going to really um, stand out and um, that's what we're going to be looking for moving forwards. And in terms of the more softer skills, um, communication is vital. It goes without saying really, but it can't be overlooked. Um, even though I've just talked about um, digitizing healthcare and that being one of our main priorities, we're still in the healthcare industry which is a human-centric industry and if you can demonstrate that you effectively um, connect with others being in your direct teams or externally with customers um, and convey a clear message then it's those interpersonal skills that will always really value um, and in terms of behaviors and i touched on before um, that we do look for people with a passion for healthcare um, and you really need to be able to be driven from um, driven about improving that patient delivery and care um, and lastly I would say resilience and 
adaptability so especially in the times that we're in at the moment it just shows that we need to really embrace change and um, in order to make um, a difference in the industry of course yeah yeah great okay so in terms of um getting into the detail um regarding your career discovery program um i think it'd be really useful if you can um share details about how and when students can apply for the programme? Yeah, of course. So we will be recruiting for uh, the programme in November of this year, and that will be for the following year's intake. So starting in September 2021. So I appreciate that that is um, quite a long time off. Um, but I would encourage you to sign up for alerts on our website and um, so the link will be on our profile on your university careers website um, and it's also worth following us on LinkedIn um, to keep up to date with when those opportunities will um, come up and we do also recruit outside of that cycle um, for intern opportunities as well so like I said, I just really encourage you to join our talent community. Brilliant. Thanks, Rachel. And finally, to summarise, what would you say are your key takeaway messages that you, you'd like the students to, to leave uh, this webinar uh, with, have firmly in their minds? I hope that um, just from this brief overview, people have been able to see that there is such a breadth of opportunities available um, here at Siemens Health and Ears. So we are a very successful medical imaging company. However, we're a leader in healthcare innovation across the entire patient journey. So there really is something for everyone. And also I wanted to say to be optimistic about applying for jobs. There's no denying it's going to be difficult for people entering the workforce after the economic impact of this pandemic but I think that that just means you'll have to prepare for your interviews and really kind of tailor your applications and apply for those companies that you have um, a particular affinity towards um, so all the preparation for video interviews that we just discussed um, it's definitely worth putting the time in um, and yeah if you're still listening then i think that you probably are interested in this area and if you're a business or engineering student um, and will be graduating soon then definitely do consider our career discovery program and applications will be open in november that's brilliant great well look Rachel, thank you so very much for taking the time to share this unique insight into Seaman Health and Ears and the opportunities that are available for students and graduates. Uh, certainly, we hope all the students on the webinar found this session useful. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this webinar is the first in our Meet the, Se Meet the Employer series. Um, so to find out more about the others that we have taking place, all you need to do is go to your newsroom on your online career platform click the webinar tab where you will be able to access the full Siemens profile with their opportunities, details of their opportunities, as well as the schedule of the other um, employer webinars that will be running. And I'd like to urge you to sign up quickly because these have been incredibly, the first one's certainly been incredibly popular and we're expecting the others to be as well. Um, before we go, I'd absolutely love to get your feedback. So with this being a first um, in the series, um, any thoughts that you have on uh, what you've experienced today, any ideas for how we may be able to improve will be very gratefully received. There's a very, very short survey that will pop up at the end of this webinar. Thanks again for joining us. And I really hope you can join us for another one of the webinars in the series. Bye for now.